The Power 40 podcast is an uplifting faith-based podcast that speaks to all that is going on in our world. Our goal is to share inspirational real life stories and experiences from notable guests around the country on matters that touch us all. The number 40 symbolizes a period of testing, trial, or probation. We all experience trying times in our lives, but it's what comes from these times that make us who we are. As we depict periods of people's lives where 40 has played out, we learn that goodness that comes from perseverance, determination, and belief. I'm your host, Danica Tramberg. Joined with me today is Omar, our co-host. Omar, can you share a little bit about who you are with everyone? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm I'm known for carnivore. I mean, that's where everybody kind of knows me from, but I pulled a lot of roles in the city. I'm on seven boards. I chair three of them. Um, and now recently getting involved in a lot more developments, consulting in different types of companies. Um, most recently involved with the Avenue and the Third Street Market Hall, which is a project that's coming up this uh, this summer. It's gonna be it's gonna be amazing. That's awesome. And today we are sitting down with Drew Franklin, the Senior Director of Player Enrichment and Programming for the Milwaukee Bucks. We are so glad you joined us today, Drew. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Um, it's it's good to see both of you. And, and knowing Omar, it's good to, to get into a conversation again. I can't remember the last time we talked, Omar, but um, it's, it's great. I'm looking forward to it. Maybe a couple months ago. <laughs> uh, that's probably about right. Yeah. I feel like both of you always have something that you're you're working on. So maybe walk us through a day in the life of Drew and Omar. Uh, I'll go first. Um, so on my end, it's a it's a unique. Uh, I guess it's kind of two. Things. So overall, I um, I help the the Bucks players grow off the court. So that's a broad category. It's a big umbrella, um, but it's also catered to their interest. So um, kind of the way we build our programming from year to year is we figure out what guys really want to do and get into, like where their interests lie, the root of it, and we build on top of that. So we, we have a few buckets that, you know, there's there's things that we have to hit. There's There's obvious requirements of different spaces that we have to be in. But then on the other end, it's kind of fun to be able to create things that um, guys like and want to get into more. And so the day to day is filled with both. Like it's the buckets of things that I have to do, which is usually um, scheduling, the traveling component, um, making sure players are are understanding their day to day in and in, in and out of the court. And um, on top of that, it's what people see, which is the fun side of the job, which is um, anything from helping a, a player explore his interest in real estate or um, simply helping a player understand how the business works and resources that are tied into the community. So it can span anywhere in between that. And my day is, is built running in between those, those two lanes and worlds. What's uh? What are some of the most interesting things that you've had to deal with, uh, focusing on the player's life, or you know, just in your day to day? Uh, interesting. Well, I I always I look at it as um, like we're the conduit to the resources. So um, obviously, the players having the 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 platforms that they do, especially nowadays, and, and especially like my joy of being with a very good and competitive team um, at my time here with the Bucks, I would say the the most enjoyable piece to it is the, the, the people that we can connect them to. And so my favorite moment of that would probably be us meeting Barack Obama. Um, while he was in office and um, just kind of really seeing the players interact um, with him at that time was was surreal and one of my favorite moments. That's awesome. I'm sure Omar, you can also relate to the whole, uh, you know, glamour side of the business and then, you know, your day-to-day -day hard work that you always have to put in. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I, I mean, there certainly is a glamour side of the business that Anyone in this business really will tell you that a lot of it is just putting out fires and grinding, right? But I mean, my day to day is, I just can't explain it. I mean, some days it's touring people to the food hall these days. 
another time it's negotiating a deal and looking at a lot of deals on a week to week basis. It's conference calls. It's, you know, a lot of times my evenings now have turned into operations of carnivore, but we have a great team to have a couple of consulting companies now. So a lot of them are taking me to dinner um, and just connecting them with the right people. So it's fun. It's, it's a lot of work. It's just different every day. How did you get into the field that you're in now? Uh, it's a long story. I kind of worked the door. When I was out in LA, I was a fighter. And so I worked the door to nightclubs and bars. Um, that just met a ton of people and sort of knew I had a base of a lot of people to be able to transition to something else. And I didn't really want to do a nightclub. So it started with a restaurant. That's the shortened version of how it all started. And I know that you're both uh, super engaged in the community too. Can you just speak a little bit more to that and, and what you're doing right now? Um, yeah, I, I guess the, the real, <laughs> what are we not trying to do? Um, we're, we're, trying to, we're honestly trying to better the community however we can and, and as long as we can and as long as we're here. So I think the interesting part about my role is, you know, I have the, the, the responsibility to help players figure out their community lanes and how they want to make an impact in the community. And then I also have my own personal tie in and things that I want to impact and, and kind of move in. So I would say for me personally, just really mentoring um, youth right now is big. It's big. I think it's a I think it's a gateway to also helping improve a lot of other issues that um, I think are the issues people see. And I believe mentoring is one of the, um, the plausible solutions to those issues that people may not see, may not get the, the praise and the recognition that it deserves. But I really believe in mentorship. And I had great mentors, not only in my career, but at young ages. So I, I know how it feels to be to be able to have different perspective and somebody that you know kind of knows what you're going through but coming from a different path and just the the valuable pieces to that uh, for me mentorship is everything so that's kind of like where I where I try to make the biggest impact and I and I don't try to do it uh, like I don't try to do it in a way where I can't focus on the quality of it right so I, I mm -hmm. usually have like a few kids that I help however I can throughout the year and I just focus on being able to get them resources spend time with them um, and just help them you know in decision making guiding planning whatever so I, I, I start small and, and kind of expand when I can but mentoring is definitely the biggest thing who would you say has been one of your biggest mentors in your journey growing up Oh, I've been blessed with a lot. I, I would say my first boss, Clark Kellogg, um, when I was in when I was in Indianapolis, um, I was with the Pacers. That's where I started. And uh, Clark was uh, the vice president of player relations at the time. So he was my he was my um, one past my direct report, but we all worked closely together. And Clark just had this unbelievable balance to life. I've never seen anything like it. Like he was still doing his CBS um, stuff. He was still the voice of NBA 2K. And then he was mentoring NBA players as the, the VP of player relations. And um, Clark was just a huge impact at the very beginning of my career. So I think that's why it's probably the most beneficial for me. But Clark's, Clark's the man, Clark's the man. When it comes to the Bucks' perspective on, on impacting the community, what is their mission? Um, it's really kind of kind of what I said earlier. Um, it's really to build a championship culture on and off the court. They're both the same, and and you know we believe if you're if you're going to strive for um, the highest level of competition on the court. You, you value that off the court at the highest level as well. And that's really where it falls. I think, honestly, the, the machine of the NBA, you're, you're gonna be a part of the community, 
even if you don't look to be. And I think there are givens. And I think one of the things that we really do well um, is finding where players are um, passionate in areas that they, they may not even realize just yet. So it's a mixture of getting their feet wet, but also leading them into initiatives that they want to build on. So overall, that's that's really the goal is to, to kind of be that champion in the community. I love it. And it's so nice that, you know, you're doing that with the players, but you're also an example of that in your own life as well. Thanks. I try. I try. So thank you. You're welcome. Omar, I feel like in business too, being a business owner, there's that level of uh, you, you have this persona that's out there and you kind of have to, whatever you say, act. And, you know, there's this level of integrity that you have to hold. And, you know, how can you speak to that in, in the business perspective of, you know, giving back to the community that you do? And Yeah, I mean, I, in terms of, you know, the persona that I put out there, I mean, it's, I put out who I am, right? And right. so it's like, you know, I go out and I stand up for things and I stand up for business. And so there's been, I've taken more bullets than I ever have in the last year, but I, I hold my head up high knowing that my intentions are great. And we've really gone through the process of doing things properly. And so that's, you know, that's just our, my philosophy in terms of like giving back. I mean, we get involved in so many different types of things and have co-hosted and raised money for a lot of different causes, but a lot of it's just like heat of the moment. So fallen officer or a family that has passed away, something had happened, we, you know, on the fly can raise money. I'm lucky. I have a lot of great friends in this world. And a lot of them say I'm the most expensive friend they have because they always write that when we need it. But just doing really cool stuff. Like right now we're working on with boss, buddy, Peggy. Um, we're going to get probably 10 to 15,000 free Uber rides to and from inner city to maybe oh, Century wow. City and have everybody get free vaccinations along with free food. So raising money to do something like that, where, you know, a lot of maybe a lot of the people in the inner city don't trust getting this vaccination, but we get some of the right people educating and saying, this yeah. is a positive thing. And it's your choice whether you want to do it or not. So just those types of things. That's amazing. How has just, you know, everything that's happened in the last year impacted both you and the NBA and then you um, owning successful restaurants and, and all of that? I mean, I, I, there had to have been so many challenges that you faced and, and just kind of how have, have you guys transitioned? Go ahead, Dee. Uh, well, starting in the league, I, I, I always think of it as um, really a microcosm of the country. I think it's impacted the league, not only in just the economy and the financial impact, but also it's opened the, the areas that need improvement in the country and just amongst everybody. I, I think a lot of people had a chance to kind of slow down and look at things differently and really look at, you know, how we can help each other as a group. And um, I think there's more opportunity now than ever before for the league to kind of really step in that lane and, and be that, that voice, that empowerment. It's really up to players where they want to fit in that space. Um, I think you'll get a range of guys that are super vocal and you'll get a range of guys that aren't vocal, but still, you know, move to be impactful in the space. So I think that the pandemic as 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 hard and difficult and challenging as it was, um, I do think you know the, the players in the league will be better, um, better equipped to just help people and to to keep focus and and to keep that in a mindful state and keep it in front of them, as busy as and demanding as the league gets. So. I think over the year, you know, there were probably a couple pivotal moments for me that um, I really just looked at things differently too. And I think one of the things I'll, I'll end with to your question, um, it really showed as, as much as we're getting um, and, and players and the organization getting praise for being really valuable in the sport, it really showed that there's a lot more things to our hustle and bustle and, and what people connect us and praise us and look at what we're doing. And um, that was made very, very apparent. And in different ways, I think people have different connections to that. But um, 
I would say that the, that's probably one of the more impactful and pivotal changes in the year that, that the pandemic has shown us. I got a lot of respect for you, Drew, man. You're good people. <laughs> <laughs> you really I, are. I, I, I hate you. It you. It's hard not to be, man. <laughs> so, so, you know, the hospitality has suffered tremendously. I have sort of equity and a partnership in several types of companies, and they basically all really suffered. But honestly, it, it just kind of, for me, I mean, I am a super positive for, person, but I mean, it made me a lot stronger. We innovated. We found ways to get through it. I built so many more relationships and friendships through this. Um, mm -hmm. And I think we're going to come out on the other side in a really, really good position. So I'm super optimistic as more people are getting vaccinated. Um, I, I, I just think that a lot of people, it, 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 the true character came out. So it's either you're going to be a certain type of person when, when times got bad, or you're mm -hmm. going to show how positive and how much of a leader you were during that time period. And so yeah. I, uh, it, was, it was as bad as it was, it was a great time for me. Yeah, that's awesome. And what do you think some of your, do you have any goals coming out of it? Because I'm sure there's been a lot of time to kind of reflect on, you know, what you could do better, what, um, you know, what you did find that worked really well for you guys. Do you have any goals within your business personally, you know, just in this year ahead? Go ahead, Omar. Yeah, I mean, for me, I, I think we're hitting a lot of our goals. I mean, I spent a lot of time doing a ton of research, forming new partnerships, bringing in more people, raising money, doing a lot of really good, positive things during this time period. And so I really feel, and we're, I think we're here at the end of this, come fall is, is kind of, I hate to say it, like my time. And so I just yeah. really feel like I partner with the right people, spend a lot of time doing the right things, and we're going to bring some incredible things to the city. It's exciting. A lot of things I'm excited. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I would say for me, it was um, <laughs> add into my last answer. It was kind of a moment in time where my my goals in, in the job were seamlessly aligned with my goals personally. And it really just it showed that I and, and me being in the, in the league and, and around this this game, I want to be more, uh, I want to serve more, honestly, just to mm -hmm. be of service to people is the biggest thing. And when we started to see all of the holes that opened up, um, once the microscope was really on um, the economy and, and how people were reacting, and as Omar said, what people really kind of showed, I think we realized there's so many places and so many things we can be doing to help and to serve. And um, to continuously do it when things seem good and when things look different as compared to, to doing it and reacting, um, for me personally and just professionally is, has been kind of what I've gotten out of this. It's, there's so much, there's so much I want to do. That there's so many ideas that I got from other ways to help and, and even being, you know, the connector of connectors with players, right, to help amplify their missions to help. And one of the things I, I would really, and I really want to make this known, um, one of the things I really liked that came out of it, especially across the leagues, I noticed that guys really came together to do stuff at the same time, the same way. That's awesome. And that's such a hard thing to do. Mm -hmm. I, I, I will say like being in this industry, a lot of people see players together. They see the product on the court of like guys mm -hmm. together in unison. But I would say, you know, with schedules, with with the demand, with rest, with travel, it's it's not the easiest thing to get guys um, to come together from a timing and chronological perspective. So for guys to kind of really prioritize their schedules to say, look, if a player on another team or a player on our team is doing something that's great, we want to get behind that and come together. And that just happened over and over and over again. So I, I felt like that was one of the underlying messages to how this thing has kind of unfolded. It's like, we have to come together first and foremost to make the type of impact that we know we can make. If you're doing it by yourself, it's great. Something good will come out of that. But yeah. how do we work together more? How do we get to more people to make more change? So that part was, was big, it was big. It's so true. I think service in general is, you know, such a important part of our lives. And we all have these unique gifts as 
it's evident just in our conversation right now. Um, we're all very different, but we all have a heart for service and, you know, can help in different ways in our community. And just giving back is, you know, as you're doing and remaining positive and, and getting back out into the world and sharing your gifts with everyone is, is what's making all the difference. And like we talk about in this podcast, power of 40, power of humans, um, it's so evident right here, right now. And that's really cool to see. And in, in your lives, I mean, you're, you're speaking about, you know, helping others, but helping yourself. How do you just stay balanced with, you know, all these ideas and things going on and helping the community, but you still have to, you know, be with your families or your, your friends and, and live your life. How do you balance all of this? You want to start that, Drew? Yeah, that's a, that's a big question. Um, <laughs> You know, personally, so I'm a, I'm a faith-based guy, and um, I believe first and foremost, God balances and anchors a lot of things in my life that um, would be a lot, a lot more difficult, and I don't really know where that would be kind of without that anchor. And I think from there, I, and growing up the way that I've grown up, I've really just understood the power of teamwork. And I think for you to understand uh, if you want to increase the things that you do and your efficiency, your effectiveness, you have to lean on other people. And that's not to lean on them to <clears throat> certain positions that help you grow. It's to lean on them to empower them to grow with you and mm -hmm. sometimes even grow past you. And I think that's an important thing that also came out in the pandemic. You know, we realized there's a, there's a lot of people in the country that have done great and exceeding things. But how can we create, um, uh, you know, maybe looking at the economy, how can we create a way that people can grow while others uh, are growing with them and help each other out to grow effectively together? And so teamwork it really helps balance your time, your ability to be effective in moments, your ability to step away to do things like this. If, if you don't have people that you can lean on and that you're really trying to grow I think it's going to be hard to make big impact yeah that's so true yeah I mean for me it's just been surrounding myself with the right people and you know I have great partners and a lot of companies Josh Krisnak Tony Janowick over at the Avenue are just amazing doing a lot of having a lot of opportunities with them and just you know I'm, I'm a family guy so if I do have time I'm just kicking it with the family hanging out and I love what I do. I mean, carnivore, I just absolutely love what I do. So every night I get to go in there and see my friends and have wine and just have a ridiculous time. Even if it is business, it isn't. It's just, it's a lot of fun. But I got to give you two, Danica, a shout out because I gave up Drew one. Like, I remember, Danica, you're really well put together for a young Thank lady. You. And like, she was, she was Brian Lammy's. I remember she was an intern at the <laughs> Miami Sports Management, best sports yeah. management company around. And everybody, I should say, all men in that office called Danica, Wisconsin's best intern. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Well, I, I'm flattered, so thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. If that's one thing if I've ever learned, too, in my life is relationships and understanding that everyone has a place in this world. Um, that's probably one of the biggest takeaways I've had when I competed at Miss USA was that I'm surrounded by these incredible women all across the country who, you know, one works for Google, one's a marine biologist. I mean, just fascinating things. And, um, you know, having them around you makes you that much more powerful and strong. And it's that support system and encouraging them. And, you know, you, you're not to compare to anybody, but just, you know, lean on those people, learn from them. And I think learning from other people, everyone has different strengths and weaknesses and it's how you kind of grow as an individual. Yeah, absolutely. Well said. So, you know, just looking at um, everything going on right now, if there was one organization that you could, you know, dive into and work with and, you know, one passion project that you had to do, is there something that stands out in your mind? Go ahead, Dee. I'll answer a second. Um, honestly, I love, I love storytelling through film. Oh, that's awesome. I'm, I'm really passionate about um, how people tell their own stories. And I think there's power in that. I think um, there is vulnerability, there's growth. There's so many things in being able to share what you've been through 
-hmm. and how it helped or didn't help you and what that can do for other people. And I just love a really good film that tells a story. Like my favorite, my favorite movie is Forrest Gump. I love which it. a lot of people, but I just love it. <laughs> I, w- I was going to say, I wasn't expecting that, but I love it. I love that movie. Like it's just his story and how he just treated everybody the right way and didn't mm-hmm. even have a choice. He just, he just lived his life right and all the amazing things he did just by living right compared to everybody else that he was meeting along the way. So um, I love storytelling. If there, was, if there was time for me to slow down and, and to work on side projects, production, storytelling, I, I would love to get into that. Um, I mean, my passion really is Milwaukee and Wisconsin. I know that sounds cheesy, but oh, I, awesome. I, I mean, there's so many passion projects and I'm working on a lot of them. So one that could be super cool that would have a massive rooftop that's going to happen next summer. Just an amazing setting overlooking the water. Another one is I want to, you know, bring another concept to the city. But right now, the passion project is working with the city and 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 Milwaukee Tool to make sure that that happens here in the city. Um, you know, just happen to be good friends with the president of Milwaukee Tool and know a lot of the folks in the city. So this is massive for Milwaukee to bring 2,000 jobs here. So that's been a big passion this week working on. That's so awesome. Um, I feel like you know, all those little steps, sometimes we feel like we're making little steps and you know, those little steps lead to something great and it sounds incredible. And I cannot wait to see that come to fruition. And, and speaking of, you know, passion and your purpose, and you said, I mean, you love your job, you love working for Milwaukee and you're doing something that you love every day. I think that's something that so many people strive for, but it's, you know, hard to get to that level sometimes. Um, and maybe that's not for everyone. Maybe not everyone's passion is going to be their career, but um, it's phenomenal that you can do that. Can you just speak to like how you got where you were today? Is this something you've always wanted to do or, you know, was this a journey yeah, I mean, where you changed your mind? And I mean, it, yeah, I mean, I still, it's changing every day and, and, and I don't even know what I do for a living. I can't label it out anymore, <laughs> but I mean, people are always my passion. I love connecting to people. Just how I built you know, carnivores, one customer at a time. And so I look at things as one connection, one friend at a time. And that's really where I spend a lot of my time is just connecting people, connecting with people. And there's nothing better. I mean, there's nothing better because of carnivore, I have worldwide connections. And so, you know, a lot of my friends and a lot of people I know benefit from it, as well as my family when we travel and things like that. So it's, it's pretty cool. I definitely need to come in for a steak soon. <laughs> have you ever but been in? I've, I've been in, it's been a while. Shouldn't have said that. <laughs> that, was, that was the invite right there. So <laughs> door is open. There you go, Drew. And, and Drew, <laughs> I feel like you two are doing something you love. So how did that come to be? Yeah. And before I forget, like, first off, kudos to Omar on just like what he just mentioned and, and being able to provide jobs. I mean, it's it doesn't get the credit it deserves. Like it is a huge thing, like massive to to know that you can help families provide for themselves and work and and build careers and relationships and build the next Omar. Like there's, there's nothing bigger and better than that, man. So like really, really like congratulations on that amazing stuff. Thank you. Um, And yeah, I think I'm very similar in, in, I'm really kind of doing whatever I want to do. And like you mentioned, it's not always in your job, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I've, I've been fortunate enough to be able to be of service, which is my real passion in my job and to help people grow. But I think and even at the younger moments of my career where I wasn't necessarily in this lane with these resources, I was still doing it because I love to do it. And I would just do it for free. I would do it with friends and uh, I would develop relationships and and having conversations with different people. And, um, you know, I was always uh, an explorer and my mom calls me like the explorer of the family. And um, I didn't, I grew up in Tampa, Florida, didn't want to stay. Went to school in South Carolina, started working in Indianapolis, migrated to Milwaukee. Uh, work in St. Louis for a little bit in between summers of school. So I just loved going to different cities, seeing different cultures, 
um, different neighborhoods. And uh, I, I definitely think there's a value in trying to understand people and uh, understand how you can help people indirectly or directly. So uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I love that. People, relationships, I think they make the world go round. And it's obvious that you guys have this passion for people and giving back. Do you recall like a time in your life where you kind of knew that was like your mission or, or purpose? You know, that that was something that ultimately where you were someday you wanted to be able to be in a position to give back Definitely. Drew, you want to take that one or me first? Doesn't matter. You go ahead. Yeah, it's a story for me. What resonated the most is I was kind of brought up this way, but like I, I kind of cry every time I tell the story. So I'm going to try to hold it together just because I get so emotional about it. But back when I said my soccer to me, um, we there was a gentleman that came by and just said he was having a really hard time. Big, big guy. And uh, he said he just really needed to get back on his feet. So we had him lay brick. We had him do some works some work for us paid him cash and just tried to help him out along the way and that was about three months and then his job was done and and he left and i never really thought anything after that and it was about five years later i know it sounds funny i was sitting at i think it was old country buffet or something like that with my son eating and i saw him looking at me and this was a big guy and he kept looking at me and i was like oh, what, what is going on here and so he finally approached the table and just said he had lost are, are you omar i said yeah i am and he, said, he said that he had lost his daughter um that that helped him get back on his feet get back in the apartment get his daughter back I never knew. Wow. So right there, yeah. Right there is where it all started. I think mm. it, it's just such a testimony too to those little things that you can do that just change someone's world. You don't even know you're impacting them in the way that you are. And it's, you know, with resources, just with being there, being the ears for someone, you can totally change their life. It's really, really impactful. Small things. Small things. Small things lead to great change. Um, mine was mine was definitely at a at a young age. I think, you know, I had a I had an interesting upbringing in kind of like seeing so many different neighborhoods. So when I was in when I was in middle school, growing up in Tampa. Um, my parents were divorced, so we we lived in a side of the city that was predominantly white, and I went to a predominantly white middle school, and I was always pretty much good with anybody. Like I, I I've always kind of had this this thing where I can just befriend anybody, and and I'm good, and uh, made friends, got along with everybody, had a great experience in middle school, and then in high school we had a. Um, we had a program where we would change. Um, we had kind of like a focus program in high school. So you could go to any high school in your county through those focus programs. So I didn't have to go to the school that was just in the location um, for me. So I went to a school that was all the way across town and kind of near the inner city of Tampa. And um, obviously that was a different neighborhood and it was a predominantly black and Hispanic um, uh, Latino school. And I was, I was there. So when I, when I was there, I would have to take two buses to get to school. And when I was there my freshman year, I noticed that like every kid that was coming in had different stories, different means, um, different resources, uh, different ways that they went about things. And it really intrigued me because just the neighborhood that I was in and where I grew up was so different and it just had a major contrast. And as I kind of peeled into those layers of people, I really just found a passion to like understand people where they were from and kind of meet them where they were to really understand them more. And I, I did that in high school. And um, that was kind of like a game changing development moment for me that kind of like set me in a path to just understand people and be of service however I could. Well, it's amazing. I think God works in mysterious ways. And just knowing that there's people like you out on this world is heartwarming. So uh, as we close out today and just reflect on the power of 40 in our lives, 
maybe trials we're going through or have overcome, we understand that in life, we continue to experience the good and the bad that life throws our way. 40 also seems to be significant in regards to time. Jesus spent 40 days fasting in the wilderness, being tempted by the devil. The great flood lasted 40 days and 40 nights. The Jewish people wandered the desert for 40 years. If either of you had just 40 minutes to impact the world, where would you start and what would you say? Wow, it's a great question. <laughs> Omar, I'll let you take this one first. I, you, you've been going first the whole time, so I'll let you do this one right there. Let me think about that. No <laughs> wrong answers. I, I can go. I mean, for me, it's just, there's just so many things to talk about, right? It's just, I think it's like, getting back to the youth, right? And I think a lot of the times and a lot of the areas that I wanna focus on really are the impoverished areas and the youth, because I think that they need the most support than anybody else really at this time. And I've gotten to understand different families and different people's situations. And every time that I think I have a problem, I, I literally feel like I live a dream life, right? Mm -hmm. And so it just starts back going back to really finding the families and, and the broken families and the kids that really need that help. Yeah, um, 40 minutes. Not a lot of time you know, to impact the whole world, but. Yeah, I, and I try to, I always think of stuff like holistically, but I'll, mm. uh, you know, we did a, we did an event last, last season. Yeah, pre, uh, pre-COVID season. Uh, and we, it was with a group called Represent Justice, and we visited um, the Racine Correctional Facility. And um, that was my first time like visiting a facility and actually being able to interact with inmates. And it, it did something to me. It really, really opened um, kind of my eyes to the thought of, you know, where these young men were and the things that they had been through and understanding mistakes and, and reform and, and safety and how that stuff works in the system. And um, I, I really feel like uh, I kind of said that then and I'm, and I'm still working on some stuff in that space now. I wanted to make it a, um, a point of mine to kind of work in that space and to really impact those guys in there. And um, there was a young man, as the, the players were talking in a group circle, there's a young man who had, I think he, he was getting out like, it might have been a few weeks later, and he had been in for a majority of his life and his adult life. And just the look on his face when he said he was getting out, I'll never forget. And just the way he said it, and the whole room just went silent because we, we take our, our freedom and our ability to, to do what we wanna do for granted and understanding, you know, mistakes that happen in your younger years versus, you know, being in a system that uh, sometimes makes it hard to really get past those mistakes the right way is such a difficult space to be in in your life. And we have a lot of people in that situation. And when he said that, I just looked and, and I think that was a game changer for me. And, and I'm gonna focus on a lot of that stuff. At the, I, I say it like I'm old, but I'm only 30. <laughs> but just moving forward, like that's definitely something that I wanna impact. Um, and I point out like there's there's still the areas of me growing and learning new spaces to impact. So that's amazing. I I just commend you both for being out in the community and doing everything that you have been doing. And I cannot wait to see uh, how many more lives that you impact in the year and years to come. So Drew, thank you so much for joining Omar and I today. And for more information on the Power of 40 podcast, visit powerofhumans.com. Also stream the podcast on your preferred streaming service.